Jimmy and Kim Pilata, Wake Rosebrick from the Celtics, Mike Rotundi, Kurt Schilling, one of the greatest Red Sox ever! Nicky Verano, I don't know where you are, but I always say hi to Nicky. God love you people. This is so exciting to be here. Is that Ming Tsai? They said, Ming, hey Ming, how you doing? I'm with Boston Royalty. No shit, I am so excited. I'm so glad we had good weather. Because it won't be long now. Any day now. Any day we're going to get fucked again. I don't know how many of you people remember last month. I don't look at this. There's a guy leaving now. You scream, cut for Dennis. I mentioned snow, you leave. <laughs> My God, we had the worst weather ever. We had snow in Boston that people were calling from around the country go, is it snowing again? Yeah, it is, dickhead. Do me a favor, lose my fucking number. We only answer the phone because we managed to shovel in shifts. Yeah, it's snowing. Up to the third floor, people saying, well, it's not so bad, we just have no place to put it. Yeah, we do. Throw it in the fucking ocean. That's what we did when I was a kid. We had trucks back in, fill them up, dump it in the ocean, plenty of parking for everywhere. But not now. No, not now. You have all these environmental wackos. Like the dirty people that work at Whole Foods. <laughs> Am I right? You go to Whole Foods, you're home and eat clean. No more processed food for me. I'll eat clean food. You go into Whole Foods, they're dirty. They got matted hair, shit stains on their shirt, filthy fingernails, and they try to sell you a pint of blueberries for 80 bucks. <laughs> what are you getting at the fucking body of Christ? Come on! And then they'll tell you, you can't throw snow in the ocean. I said, why not? Because of all the salt and the sand. The fuck you think is in the ocean? <laughs> you have to let it melt and dissipate organically. Really, how's that work? Well, it melts and it goes in the sores. And when do you think the sores go, you live with in the fucking ocean? It was so bad, we closed the MBTA. First time in the history of the NBA day, we closed it. Not that any of you fucking people in here ride the fucking team. <laughs> oh, I know. I get on that team, the doors closed, I looked around and I said, holy shit, I'm the best looking person on this train. <laughs> There's a dollar, don't touch me. <laughs> sick people died. I know, I was a sick person. I was a big fat bastard. I dress like this because I fucking can. Do you know I was 388 pounds? Oh yeah, 388 pounds with a size 56 inch waist. I was so fat, my wife said, you can start fucking other people. <laughs> really? Yeah, go ahead. I don't give a shit. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I would get on an elevator. People would look at me in the weight capacity and back at me and say, I'll jump. I'll take this fucking thing down. Stop looking at me! <laughs> you know you're getting fat when you lie in a bed, you feel something move, then you realize, shit, I'm alone. <laughs> My doctor said, Lenny, I don't know. I said, what do you know? He said, I don't know. I don't, really don't know. I see you, I just don't know what the fuck to think of you. I think of use them reverse health insurance, like reverse mortgages. You know, the Mass General, they get the fucking, I get to go there free, and when I die, they take me and they throw the body away and just concentrate on that sick fucking mind. <laughs> because I tell you what, oh my God, it was unbelievable. I got in the best shape of my life. I was running, swimming, lifting weights, and then one day I'm over my sister's house having dinner. And all of a sudden, <gasps> and my sister goes, what is this, a new part of your act? And my other sister goes, nah, he's turning blue. <laughs> he's gonna ruin this fucking dinner. We gotta get him to the hospital. So they take me, they throw me in a fucking trunk, and they drive me to Mass Gen. What's wrong? I don't know. He fucking ruined our dinner. I said, I think it's a heart attack. I can't breathe. So they check. So Mr. Clark, it's not a heart attack. I said, well, it's gonna be kidney stones. He said, why would you say that? I said, well, I know kidney stones. I've had five kidney stones. I'm like a human fucking quarry. I've got kidney stones. Which makes me back think that the first time I had kidney stones. I was living in an apartment in Harvard Square with 16 comedians. The rent was $160 a month. We never had the fucking rent. 
I signed for the fucking thing. I was under all the pressure. And I just had to get away from these other comedians. I went for a run along the river. And I came back and I was doing my post-run workout, doing a line, smoking a joint, having a drink. Getting ready for the night show. And all of a sudden, we're like, oh. like, Good morning, guys. What are you, is this no party rack? And Dennis Leary, God love me, says, no, no, something's wrong with him. He's trying to tell us something. What is it, Lash? When he took some bad pills? <laughs> Somebody calls 911 and the Cambridge Rescue comes. And they come in and they wheel me into the fucking truck and they take me to Cambridge City Hospital. Not my first choice. Yeah. <laughs> but it was the closest. And I walk in there and there's fucking people from all everywhere. I got me, I got it. It's like the fucking checkout line of Market Basket. No shit. <laughs> How the babble I'm telling you. And everyone's screaming, I come in, fucking help me! Help me! I have insurance, I have fucking cash, I'm dying, shoot me! <laughs> Some nurse, that's why I love nurses, oh my god, she took me backstage and she jabbed me in the ass with 500 cc's of the water. Uh -huh. and 30 seconds later, I was like, oh, I'm okay now. I've got to go apologize to those people in the emergency room. Someone else said, I'm so sorry. They were, I said, I didn't mean to swear in front of your children. And then the nurse came up, put her arm, and said, okay, Mr. Clark, let's take you back and put some clothes on. <laughs> So now they say to me at the master, and I say, Mr. Clark, oh, it's not a heart attack. It's not a kidney stone. I said, what is it? They said, we don't know. I go, you don't know? What the fuck is wrong? You're the best hospital in the world. You've got and they just shot me in the ass. And so I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so five days later, the doctor comes in, Mr. Clark. I said, yeah. He said, we got good news and bad news. I said, well, give it the good news. I'm a fucking wreck, man. I can't believe this is happening to me. They said, well, you're having a moment. I go, that's the fucking good news? They go, yeah, yeah. It's a strange, it's a strange thing. It's, we haven't seen this strain of ammonia in 38 years. It's called empanema. Empanema. Is that a sandwich? <laughs> I said, oh, Mr. Clark, that's empanada. Like, empanema, empanema. Oh, is that with a girl on the beaches? Mr. Clark, this is very serious. I go, I know it's serious. I'm trying to fucking figure out what it is. It's 38 years, we haven't seen it. Have you been around any foreign people? I said, have you been outside? <laughs> Mr. Clark, we're doing everything we can. I go, well, you're not doing enough. I'm a fucking wreck. Help me. <coughs> so they called down to the CDC in Atlanta, and they got some fucking empanema remover or some shit. And they shattered me, and I started to come around. And it was bad. You know, they had to put a tube from my back into my lung because my lungs had collapsed. It was filled with pus and shit. They hooked me up to a shop back, and I'm walking around just to fucking try to move with a shop. Well, I'm not a medical person, but that's what it fucking was. <laughs> So a nurse comes in and says, Mr. Clark, and says, yeah, have you moved your bowels? I said, I didn't touch a fucking thing in this room. <laughs> said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm high. I'm old, I'm high, I'm a wreck. I don't know what's going on. She said, well, it's really important that you go to the bathroom. I said, yeah, I'm trying to do other little important things like fucking breathing. <laughs> it's okay. When was the last time you went to the bathroom? I said, well, how long have I been in here? And about seven days. They go, well, that's about right. They go, Mr. Clark, that's terrible. They go, don't get me fucking nervous. I know I'm trying to go now. <laughs> We've got to go. I says, all right, I will. Well, how do we do this? Help me. Well, first, we'll get some hot water with lemons. <laughs> well, that sounds delightful. <laughs> that didn't work. And they said, well, we'll give you a stool softener. I said, all right, let's give that a shot. That didn't work. And they gave me a stool inducer. That didn't work. Then they gave me a stool whisper, but she was Spanish. I didn't understand the fucking thing she was saying. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Clark, we'll fix you. I said, you're not doing a good job. You're not fucking helping me. I'm a rag. I'm getting more nervous. I said, well, we're going to give you an animal. And I said, I've seen that in porno films. I'm up for that. Let's go. <laughs> Nervous. I'm really fucking nervous. They're scratching the head. Don't scratch your fucking head. That means you don't know what you're doing. Help me. Help me. Okay, okay. We're going to give you, there's something else we're going to do. We're going to give you a, a Fort Knox deposit. A suppository. Yeah. 13,000 people. No one's going, yeah, I know. Now, no one knows what the fuck a suppository is. I'm at my wit's end. I'm looking at this nurse and I go, 
What's this suppository? And she was gorgeous. Oh my God, the most beautiful woman I've ever laid eyes on in my life. Like Florence Nightingale and some strippers all rolled into one. <laughs> and she says, well, how can I explain it to you? You know, and I'm like, oh. She says, well, it's like we take these grape leaves and we jam them in your ass and then you explode like dynamite. <laughs> to the face of the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. And I said, what time does that cranky nice nurse come on? <laughs> and she put on a wetsuit, swim goggles, and said, how fucking bad is this gonna get? <laughs> I'm looking out at you, people. And some of you are looking at me like dogs watching TV. <laughs> you're having fun, but you're not sure why. <laughs> it's not me. It's not me. People say, do you always want to be a comedian? I never thought I was going to be a comedian. I thought I was going to be the world's greatest cockfighter until I found out it involved birds. <laughs> I would have been a genius if it wasn't for all the lead paint I hit as a baby. <laughs> and my mother put me by that window so and said, Chew, boy, watch the squirrels. Chew. <laughs> for those of you who keep track, that's three quick animal jokes I just threw in. <laughs> I don't want you to get the wrong idea about me, because I'm a lot of things, but I am not one of those people who has sex with animals. What do they call that, sex with animals? What's that called? Bestiality. Yeah, tell me more about that. <laughs> no, I'm no judge. I, you, you, you have your own thing. I've never done that. I've never done that. I've never had sex with anyone in my life. But if I did, Jimmy, you know what? I would fuck a horse. That way, when I'm done, I get a ride home. <laughs> hey, you people have been amazing. Thank you so much for coming. I love this fucking crap. Thank you. Nothing can stand it.